Hey everybody and welcome back to the Moto One US YouTube channel where today it is all about Hyundai N. You can see behind me I have the brand new Elantra N behind one shoulder and I also brought along the Veloster N. We're gonna do a nice informal walk around. We're gonna compare the two side by side, show you the interiors and honestly what's different between the two cars. Stick around. So those that are familiar with the Hyundai brand and especially the N models know that the Elantra N is the new one. That's the one to be excited about here. The Veloster N has been on sale for the last few years, but this is honestly our first opportunity to see the two cars side by side. So I thought, hey, what the heck? Uh, let's put them next to each other and see what the differences are. Also, quick shout out to the nice people at Hyundai who were kind enough to bring this car and basically meet me on the side of the road to film something quick in an hour. Uh, but you know what? This is our first chance to see this car in person, so we took them up on it. So these two are lined up next to each other. Let's walk around the exterior differences. You can see just right off the bat, there's only subtle tweaks, and I love that they're actually the same color, which gives us a chance to like really nitpick the design changes. Let's start with the Elantra, because that's kind of the reason why we're here. We haven't seen this car in person just yet. It's definitely in your face and it has a lot of face. <laughs> There's a huge, huge blacked out portion which totally stands out uh, up against light paint. We've also seen this car in white and it's the same sort of situation where it's definitely a big contrast. Uh, nice extra front air dim down here and a little bit of a splitter though it doesn't look like you're gonna crunch over every driveway you come into contact with. I do like these body lines right here. That's a good look right there. And then it traces to the massive Hyundai logo in the middle of the car. Difference between the Elantra and the Veloster is the Veloster actually has it down on the grill. Both of them feature a very prominent, very proud N logo directly to the left of the uh, main corporate grill. Nineteen inch wheels on this Elantra. Love this design. Got to say, I love them on the Veloster as well. But this actually is a little bit more ornate. We have some more things going on uh, than just like a simple five spoke. Nice red brake caliper with the N logo behind it. And the big difference here is the Elantra is rolling on Michelin's. This has Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires. The Veloster over there has Pirelli's. So that's a big change in tire. And you know, we've driven Pilot Sport 4S a bunch of times. It's a phenomenal tire uh, and shows that this car is supposed to be positioned just slightly up market over the Veloster. Nice blacked out mirror and black trim around the windows, again, to contrast the lighter paint. And then we have an end badge right there and a red stripe that traces all the way back to the rear of the car. To me, that's the best angle right there. Nice rear three quarter angle. The face of the car is made to me by the headlights and I think they just kind of take charge too much and take over the design. It's kind of the only thing you focus on. But here, it's a nice mix between subtle while still knowing, actually, I guess I shouldn't say subtle. Look at this freaking spoiler <laughs> on the back of this car. As a sedan, that's, that's quite a spoiler and your eyes drawn to that immediately. And then you do have a nice diffuser as well with two huge exhaust chutes. Uh, and as we've heard in the past, Hyundai N models sound phenomenal. So we'll definitely get a little exhaust clip from back here and hear it. Over on the Veloster, Nice wheel design here. We've seen these for the last few years. I love this wheel design, a little bit more black included as opposed to the Elantra. And like I said, this one is on Pirelli's. Uh, I didn't mention, but the difference in tire size, this is on 235s. That's where the Elantra is on 245s. Here's sort of the Veloster's calling card. Only one door in the back. This is a three door, well, technically four if you count the hatch back there, but yeah. Other than that, I'm a little bit partial to the design of the Veloster. I just think as uh, a hot hatch, this has everything you want it to. It has the same rear diffuser as the Elantra, maybe not the exact same piece, but the same sort of design motif uh, and very similar twin exhaust out the back, which just sort of take over in there, just at the absolute center of the design back here. Nice end badge as well to go along with Veloster right here. 
And I love the little triangle brake light. Nice little touch. So now let's step inside because the differences are actually a little bit more extreme with the interiors. So before we actually get inside the Elantra, there's a little bit of my sunscreen on the door. Apologies for that. That's me, that's not the car. I don't want to have any comments here about Hyundai build quality. That is not <laughs> their fault. This is my fault. Some streaks right here and then a little Alcantara piece, which looks nice. And then the seats are sort of a big deal. Uh, in the Veloster, it has the same general bucket shape and then you get these awesome end badges that light up at night and some really cool light blue trim. What you don't get are blue seat belts. That is a big, big, big sad point for me because on the Veloster you get the light blue seat belts to match the paint but they make up for it because this car gets heated seats so these buckets are not heated in the Veloster in the US you couldn't option that so the Elantra is going to take care of that and bring heated seats uh, with these buckets let's step inside real quick sorry I'm starting a manual car holding a camera clutch here let's fire it up So the obvious big difference between the Elantra and the Veloster on the interior is what's in front of me right now. We have twin 10.3 inch displays in the Elantra. That's a big upgrade. The Veloster has uh, traditional analog gauges in front of the driver and then a smaller infotainment screen over here as well. Other big difference is on the steering wheel. So we have two buttons here that are labeled N and N, which is kind of silly to me, but they do different things. Uh, the N over on my left controls the drive modes. I don't know if you heard the car wake up a little bit, but you can cycle between Eco, Normal, and Sport. Major differences here. Uh, you can program these two N modes to have custom presets, just like you get in BMW M cars and the AMGs, things like that. Um, but there's a lot more things to keep track of. There's a launch control system. You can actually control the RPM at which the launch control takes off from. Uh, there's a lap timer function, engine temperature, oil temperature. And then you notice as I hit the brake pedal, it shows you the brake pressure in real time. I don't know who's going to be looking at that while you're hooning it around a racetrack, but they have it for you if you want it. Same thing with the throttle. Super cool stuff there. Performance options unlocks a little bit more. And this just might be <laughs> the coolest thing. There's active sound design, so I don't want to uh, misconstrue it. It's not through the exhaust, it's through the speakers inside of the car. But as you go through here into advanced, you can change how the engine sounds inside of the car. TCR, which is the high performance race version that you can make it sound like a rally car, I guess. You have high performance, sporty, and personal. So each of those is a slightly different tune on how the car's engine sounds just from the speakers inside of the cabin. That's pretty trick, I gotta say. I don't know how different it makes it. I don't know if I like TCR more than Rally, and it honestly seems like maybe one step too far when it comes uh, to all these performance options, but just a ton of different things. Very cool stuff here inside of the Elantra N. But over here, that's where you get this new fiery transition. I want to do that again if I can. Look at this. A little bit of fire and everything. You get it into full on end mode and the ESC goes into sport. You get oil temperature, engine temperature. It's obviously supposed to be a lot more in your face. Then let's get to the most important part. Not bad. <laughs> Elantra. 
do a quick overview of the Veloster. So quick round of pros and cons. Pro the Veloster, blue seatbelt. Hell yeah, these look fantastic. And it's honestly a crime that they're not in the Elantra. I don't know if those are optional, I'm gonna have to check, but these are awesome. Same light up end badge, and then same general bucket shape here in the Veloster that you get this nice blue streak that runs up the center. That design's a little bit cooler. Uh, con is that they're not heated. So Elantra wins that round. You can see a little bit of a difference here. Steering wheel is different. Actually, I'll just hop in. Analog gauges here, and then a smaller infotainment screen. Otherwise, sort of a similar, uh, you know, general design going on in the center console. I'll say this car is a little bit more hard plastic. The Veloster there, the Elantra had some cool like Alcantara situation on the door panels. You do not get that here. Everything here is sort of a harder plastic. Let's fire this one up. Drive modes, you can again cycle between normal, sport, and eco. Obviously, the Elantra's gauge cluster just looks a lot cooler. There's something to be said about analog gauges. We don't get too many of those now, do we? And then over on this side, you have a checkered flag, and that's going to put you into N mode, which will also show up on the center screen. And you know what that means. Cool shift indicator light as well on this car. So there is your quick and dirty walk around comparison between the new Elantra N and the Veloster N. I'll say we've driven the Veloster N a few different times and you just forget how exciting it is to get behind the wheel of a car like that that's that engaging and just not that much money. So we have a lot to expect from that new Elantra N. We're not allowed to drive it yet, but it should be in the next few weeks. Hyundai's gonna put the car on sale toward the end of the year. That's also when we'll get a confirmation on pricing that we can expect it to be somewhere around $35,000. So for more on both of these end products and every new car we review and walk around, please, please, please subscribe to the Moto One US channel. And as always, thanks for watching.